This is Dave2D, and this is my review of the MSI PE60 2QE. Their naming system is a little bit confusing, but the short of it is this. They have a P series, which stands for Prestige, and a G series, which is their gaming line. And within each line, they have a bunch of different screen sizes and configurations. So they have a whole bunch of like numbers and letters that can get a little confusing. But the one we have here, PE60 2QE. All right, so I've had this for like a week and a half. I've been using it as my daily driver for basically everything. I've played a lot of games on it. I've done very little work on it because of it, but I've edited two full videos on it, including the one you're watching right now. So here's my review. It comes in a gray box. You open it up. Notebook is sitting in a foam bracket. It comes with an AC adapter, a bunch of pamphlets, and MSI stickers. The top surface of the notebook is aluminum, and it gives it a surprisingly premium look on the exterior. It's brushed aluminum, and it doesn't have any issues with fingerprints or smudges. On the bottom, we have five rubber feet that are pretty grippy, and they help to prop up the notebook for good air intake. So the two main air intakes are up here, and down here you can see the front facing speakers. Now there's a sticker that says the warranty is void if the stickers are removed. So I removed all the screws, but that last screw is underneath that sticker. So it kills me that I can't open it up. But if you're willing to void your warranty, it looks like you can easily upgrade your RAM and your hard drive and even add a second M2 SATA drive if you want. Okay, going around the notebook, on the right side we have a DVD drive, a USB 3 port, a deep SD slot, and the power connection. On the left side, we have the lock slot, a killer 2200 ethernet port, three more USB ports, an HDMI port, a mini display port, and lastly, dedicated mic and headphone jacks. On the front here, you can see how the speakers face the user. There are actually a total of four speakers, like each one of these grills has two speakers behind it, but we'll talk about them in a bit. On the back, you can see the exhaust vents of the system. Now, the build quality of the chassis is pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of plastic, but it feels well-made and nothing feels flimsy. The screen has a little bit of flex, even though there's aluminum on the top, but there's not much and it never felt like an issue. Okay, the unit I'm reviewing has a four core Intel Broadwell i7 that's running at 2.7 gigahertz, a 15.6 inch 1080p screen, 12 gigs of RAM, GTX 960M with two gigs of video RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, a DVD drive, all for around $1,100 US. The screen is an IPS panel with a res of 1920 by 1080. It's not a touch screen, but it's pretty good. Matte finish, colors are great, viewing angles are good, but it's not like a really bright screen. Color accuracy is also pretty good. It's picking up at 96% sRGB and 74% Adobe RGB. There's a hardware key on the notebook that you can press to cycle between different color profiles for like games or movies. It's kind of cool, but I didn't use it very much. I just found that the default sRGB profile was the nicest to look at. And just out of curiosity, I tried both video connections and you can push out 4K from either of the ports. The keyboard has chiclet keys. They're comfortable to type on, but the arrow keys take some getting used to because they're positioned a little differently from most notebooks. And it's a keyboard with a number pad again, which shifts the entire keyboard over to the left. So you're gonna get some accidental keystrokes at first. Like I legitimately lost at Street Fighter because I kept pressing the wrong keys. I mean, I'm not good, but I swear it was the keys. All right, it's got three stages of backlighting and overall, once you get used to the positioning of the keys, it's an enjoyable keyboard. The trackpad is also shifted over to the left of the notebook. It's a pretty decent trackpad. I mean, it's not as good as an Apple trackpad, but I like it and I find it so weird that a middle price notebook like this ends up having one of the better Windows trackpads. My only complaint are the buttons. The physical buttons, which are cool, but they feel kind of cheap and they click really loud. The speakers are really good. And again, I'm surprised that a mid-priced notebook like this has such good quality speakers. Good mids, good highs, very good bass for a notebook speakers. And there isn't much distortion at max volume. Here's what they sound like. The system idles a little bit loud, like it's not completely silent. The hard drive and the fan both have a little noise, so it comes in just under 30 decibels. When you play some lightweight games like Dota 2 or Counter-Strike, the fans kick in and it comes in at around 40 decibels. But when you play some heavier games, or if you wanna hit this hardware button for maximum cooling, it hits 45 decibels. It's pretty loud, but it doesn't stay at max speed for very long. I took some thermals with the Fleur 1 and cooling is really good on this machine. It runs like five or six degrees cooler than a MacBook Pro and it's only a little bit louder. Okay, let's talk performance. The hard drive in here is a 7200 RPM drive. You get about 100 megabytes read and write, but it just feels really sluggish. 
I did some video editing and I had to use an external SSD because that one terabyte drive was too slow. It edits 1080p footage easily. And even though I couldn't see my footage in 4K without an external monitor, it handled it well. So if you're looking for a notebook for video editing, this is not bad. It's just that I would totally pop off that bottom lid, avoid the warranty, and just get some faster storage in there. Gaming is pretty good on this guy. It's running a GTX 960M, so light or moderately demanding games like Counter-Strike, Dota 2, Heroes of the Storm, these all run pretty well at 1080p on high settings. So like you're getting a comfortable 60 frames per second. But more demanding games like Rust or GTA 5 or Witcher 3, you're just gonna have to fiddle with settings and drop down your quality to get better frame rates. Like if you really wanna play demanding games, this isn't an ideal computer. You're gonna want a GTX 970 or a 980 for that. Frame rates when it's running just on battery are poor. Like we're talking half the frame rates you'd normally get when it's plugged in. So no amount of fiddling in the GeForce app or Windows is gonna fix that. Okay, I need to talk about battery life. So this thing has a built-in DVD drive, which is pretty cool. I mean, in 2015, it's almost retro hipster cool to have a DVD drive built into your notebook. They're pretty rare these days. But if you need one, if you're like workflow or if you have a lot of disc-based games, if you need one, it's kind of cool to have one built in. The issue though is that when you have a disk drive inside your notebook, you end up taking away the space that's normally allotted for your battery. And as a consequence, this thing has a very small battery. So the average 15.6 inch notebook, it has a battery of like 60 to maybe 90 watt hours. This one has a 41.4 watt hour battery. It's pretty small. So just the numbers out there, just so you know, uh, when you're playing games, just playing games on battery life, 45 minutes, it's pretty short. If you're watching movies off the drive, two and a half hours, and if you're just doing regular work like light web browsing or just chilling out on the computer, you're gonna get about three hours with screen at about three quarters brightness. So, I mean, battery life is not its strong point, but if you need a DVD drive, this is kind of cool. Okay, recap. The PE60, it's got pretty good build quality with its aluminum surface and plastic chassis. It has a 1080p screen, which is solid, good colors, reasonably bright, and a matte finish. The keyboard is comfortable, has a numeric pad, so it's shifted over and you'll have to get used to it. The trackpad is good, the buttons are less good. And on the inside, if you peel off that warranty sticker, it has a Broadwell i7 that's fast, very well cooled, a GTX 960 that isn't the fastest mobile card, but it's very capable for playing everything aside from the most demanding games right now. 12 gigs of RAM, which can theoretically be upgraded to 16 gigs if you wanna peel off that sticker, a one terabyte hard drive that I would like to replace with an SSD, a hipster DVD drive, four front facing speakers that sound pretty good, and a disappointingly small battery. Okay, so some closing thoughts here. I really like this notebook. I think they did a great job in terms of its technical components. I think they did a good job in terms of build quality, especially for the price. Now. Two things kind of bug me. The first is that battery. I wish they'd given us a bigger battery in the first place and just gotten rid of that DVD drive or to have a removable DVD drive that you kind of stick in a secondary battery into. I mean, that's very 1990s, but it's been done before. That'd be kind of cool to bring it back. The second thing is, I mean, this affects me, not everybody, is that sticker on the bottom that says not to remove it if you want to keep your warranty. And that bugs me because, I mean, the hard drive that's in there, that should be out of there. And it's very easy and inexpensive to swap that out if you don't care about warranty. But if you do, I mean, it'll deter you from upgrading your system. That's the end of the review. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give me some thumbs. And if you loved it, give me some subs. It's been nice and I'll see you guys next time.